Genesis chapter number 39. Saklat tayo ng Genesis. At ipagpapatuloy natin ang buhay ni Joseph sa pag-aaral natin sa aklat ng Genesis. Uh, chapter 39. So ilang chapters na lang matatapos na tayo sa aklat ng Genesis. At masasabi natin na complete natin ang book of Genesis. Wow! So I hope you're learning some truths, biblical truths in the book of Genesis. All right. So uh, chapter 39 this morning. And uh, this is basically Joseph uh, was sold uh, to slavery. And uh, he finally gets to Egypt. He travels down to Egypt, the businessmen, the slave holders and tradesmen, Ishmaelites and Midianites. They're the same. Uh, they are. They've taken Joseph down to Egypt and sold him to a officer, uh, a man of rank, um, an officer of Pharaoh. Napag sinabing Pharaoh sa Bible, yon ibig sabihin ng Pharaoh, president or prime minister. Yan yung pangulo ng Egypto, yung pinakamataas na official nila, pangulo nila. Pag sinabing Abimelech, ganun din. Pinakamataas na panun, uh, pinuno ng region or ng Canaan. Yun, Abimelech. Um, and so, yung Pharaoh dito sa kapanahunan ni Joseph, kung gusto mong tingnan sa encyclopedia o sa world history, ang Pharaoh dito ay si... Um, uh, sino ito? Si... Sesostris the third, Sesostris the third, no mga 1878 BC, okay? So anyway, para lang yan sa history textbook. So pag ang ang pinag-usapan dito, pinapakita dito na yung kasaysayan ni Joseph ay true story, hindi ito fairy tale, hindi ito gawa-gawa lang. Talagang may historical, geographical sociopolitical na para siyang history talaga at in fact yung mga ancient histories sa lahat ng mga nasusulat sa mundong ito yung book of Genesis ay nagpo-provide ng maraming information so it's amazing how the Bible uh, weaves in history and it weaves in the social political climate of Egypt And uh, so this is not a fairy tale. This is true. There are geographic locations, true people groups like the Ishmaelites, true people group like the uh, Canaanites. And when you see Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh just means the president or the prime minister or the man in charge of Egypt. So let's look at verse number one. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. So naalala ninyo kung saan sa geography siya na uh, linagay sa pit. Doon siya sa Dothan. Tapos yung mga Ishmaelites, bumaba sila galing sa um, Gilead. Bumaba sila papunta sa Egypt. And Potiphar, yan ang pangalan ng uh, kumbaga captain, isa sa mga opisyales ni Pharaoh. Ang pangalan niya, Potiphar. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him down thither. And so, uh, he's like a general. Para siya yung general. Siya yung um, in charge ng army, ng guards. Ng guard. Okay? Uh, notice verse number two. And the Lord was with Joseph. And the Lord was with Joseph. Uh, eto ay hindi lang kasaysayan ni Joseph pero kasaysayan din ito ng, ni Jehovah, ng Panginoon, na siya ay sumasa kay Joseph. Kasama ni Joseph palagi ang Lord. At kung nasaan si Lord, uh, doon mo makikita yung blessing ng Panginoon. Wherever the Lord is, that's where the blessing is. Joseph was blessed not because of his faithfulness, although he is a faithful man. But Joseph is blessed because of the presence of the Lord. Wherever the Lord is, that's where the blessing is. And so is the Lord in the midst of his church? Yes, he is. And that's why church is a blessing. 
Not because of who we are. Not because of each other, although we love each other. But because we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our midst. And so where the Lord is, that's where his blessing is. Uh, uh, the New Testament believer is much better than Joseph and the Old Testament believers. Because the Holy Spirit of God lives inside of us. Mas mabuti nga ang New Testament believer kesa sa Old Testament believers. Katulad ni Joseph, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Kasi yung Old Testament, hindi pa ibinigay ng Diyos Ama ang banal na Espiritu. The Holy Spirit was only given in Acts chapter number 2 at Pentecost. And uh, He indwells the believers permanently. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit will come upon a believer and depart. Uh, the Holy Spirit can empower an unbeliever and depart. Uh, but in the New Testament, because of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and because of Jesus ascending to the throne and leaving us, He brings down, He brought down the Holy Spirit of God and the Spirit of God lives inside of us. So really, wherever we go, We have, if you're saved, if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit of God with you. And no matter where you go, you are blessed. You are blessed. No? So sa mundong ito, uh, pag nakita mo yung buhay mo, i-consider mo, ligtas ako, nasa akin ang banal na Espiritu ng Diyos, at ang future ko ay magiging maganda. The best is yet to come. Kung Kristiyano ka. Now, kung hindi ka ligtas, kung hindi ka kristyano, the worst is yet to come for you. Dahil uh, wala kang pag-asa. Now, me- maaaring meron kang kalusugan, meron kang pera, pero pagdating sa pag-asa, mm, kapayapaan, mm, sagot sa mga pananalangin, very rare. So, the blessing talaga. And the Lord was with Joseph. At inulit itong parira lang ito sa verse 21. Look at verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. Look at verse number 23. Uh, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And so again, yes, Joseph is a faithful man. But more than that, God is a faithful God. And he is always with Joseph. And that's the secret of Joseph's prosperity. The secret of Joseph's blessing is the Lord is with him. Oh, Christian, do not forget God is with you always. Kahit na paminsan mahirap at hindi mo nakikita ang kamay ng Diyos sa buhay mo, ah, tandaan mo na ang presence ng Panginoon never na mawawala sa Kristiyano. Kahit na gumawa ka pa ng mali, kahit na ang decision mo mali, the presence of God will never leave you. At dito, ito ay dahil God is faithful. Now, uh, as I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, have they always been faithful? No. <laughs> Especially Judah. <laughs> okay. But God is with them because of covenant relationship with God. Okay. And so let's look on verse number two. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. Yung salitang prosperous dyan sa Bible, ibig sabihin successful. Pero yung success nito, ni Joseph, hindi dahil automatic. Wala siyang ginawa, pero successful siya. No? Ang prosperity ng Panginoon, sa mana ng palataya, ay binibigyan niya tayo ng wisdom. Binibigyan tayo ng Diyos ng kaalaman, karunungan. At kapag binigyan ka ng counsel, wisdom, biblical counsel at wisdom sa salita ng Diyos, nasa sa atin bilang mana ng palataya na i sa buhay natin ang principles ng salita ng Diyos. Uh, it is our responsibility to apply the wisdom that God gives us. And if you're a Christian and you apply the wisdom of the Word of God, you will be guaranteed good success. The wisdom of God's word given to you. Ang problema kasi sa Kristiano, alam mo kung, kung ano yung tama, alam mo na sang ayon sa salita ng Dios, pero ayaw mong gawin. Oh. And uh, so it won't be, it won't work well for you, but it works well for the faithful man who applies the wisdom that God gives him. 
And so let's move on. Let's read on. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Uh, ito ay delikado kasi nakikita nyo yung paulit-ulit na sinasabi ni Moses. No? Siya ang nagsulat nito. Rene-rehearse lang ni Moses ang buhay ni Joseph. Pero pansinin mo, sabi, Egypt, Egyptian, Egypt, Egyptian, house of his master, the Egyptian. At paulit-ulit ngayong binanggit ito dahil natatandaan ba ninyo yung dalawang promises? Seed promise at saka land promise. May land promise ang Panginoon sa mga anak ni Abraham. At ngayon, delikado ang ang mangyayari sa land promise kung mananatili sila sa Egypt. Kaya, yes, alam natin kung alam mo yung story ng Bible, yes, maninirahan sila sa Egypt ng 430 years, pero hindi sila mananatili doon. Ilalabas sila ng Panginoon. Sinong ginamit ng Panginoon para ikalas sila sa uh, Egypt? Si Moses. That's very good. So, <clears throat> dahil ang land promise nila, hindi Egypt. Ang land promise ng Panginoon para sa Israelites ay yung land of Israel o sa kasalukuyan dito, yung Kainaan. Kainaan. Okay? <clears throat> And so, that's a danger uh, of the land promise. So, yung Genesis 38, the danger of the seed promise. Muntik ng masira ang messianic line. So Genesis 39 naman, muntik na mawasak yung land promise. And so, let's look at verse number 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. Na, na, natuklasan ng master ni Joseph. Wow, every time na binibigyan ko ng project si Joseph, ang ganda ng labas. It works. It's successful. Uh, bigyan ko... Patungan ko pa ng responsibility. Okay, ito, gawin mo ito. Ito, gawin mo ito. Lahat ng binibigay niya, kumbaga, parang bless na bless talaga siya ng Panginoon. At uh, so, ang ginawa ng captain, siya na lang ang ginawa niyang second in command sa kanyang poste. And so, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us na ang Diyos talaga ang faithful. At ang Diyos ang secret ng Christian blessings. Uh, the, the blessing of Joseph Do you believe that God only wants to bless Joseph? Yung, yung blessing ni Joseph kay Joseph lang? No. Do you believe that God wants to bless all of us who have the presence of the Lord in our lives? Yes. And so we, we too can experience the blessings in the, of the Lord as long as we have faith in Him and trust in Him. And as we work and as we fulfill our responsibilities, God comes on the scene and blesses us. If we do the work without prayer, how can God bless us? Paano tayo i-bless ng Panginoon kung hindi tayo marunong mag-pray? Gawa ng gawa, pero hindi naman natin, hindi naman natin dinededicate sa Panginoon. Uh, <clears throat> you cannot expect that, you know. And verse number four, and Joseph found grace in his sight and served him, and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hand. Nagtaka ba kayo kung bakit hindi ko malas si Joseph? I mean, Joseph could have just left and go back home. He could have just been like, "I'm going to ride the next caravan back to Israel, uh, back to Hebron. Huh. I'm out of here." <laughs> no, but Joseph put himself under the hand of God and put himself under Potiphar's house and served Potiphar as a steward, as a manager. And this is exactly us as a Christian. God blessed us, God lives inside of us, and then God gives us things to manage. We are stewards. Tayo ay managers ng mga blessings na binibigay sa atin ng Diyos. How do we, are we faithful stewards? Are we faithful stewards of the blessings of God? Or uh, do we fulfill our responsibilities uh, as a steward of the Lord? You see? And uh, he that is faithful in the least will be faithful in much. And so Joseph found grace and uh, he's a, an example of a good steward. 
a, a good manager. And Christians do the same thing. Tayo rin ay stewards of the mysteries of God. Ibig sabihin, ipinagkatiwala sa atin ng Diyos ang kanyang message, ang kanyang gospel. Ipinagkatiwala sa atin ng Diyos ang kanyang mga salita. Ano yung ginagawa natin sa kanyang mga salita? Isinasabuhay ba natin? Binabasa ba natin? Pinag-aaralan ba natin? At pinapahayag ba natin? You see, uh, are we faithful Christians? Do we do our part and share the good news of Jesus Christ? All right. Look at verse number five. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Kaya lang na bless si Potiphar dahil kay Joseph. And that's, that's exactly how it is. If you're a dedicated Christian, God will bless where, what you do, what you work. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these things shall be added unto you. And that's the testimony of Scripture, the faithful servant. All right? And the, the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew uh, not aught that he had save the bread which he did eat. Napakalaki ang tiwala ni Potiphar kay Joseph. And so uh, Potiphar trusted Joseph with near just about everything except for, for what he would eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well-favored. So maganda ang itsura ni Joseph. Well-favored siya. At uh, bless na bless talaga siya ng Panginoon. Now, nagkaroon ng incident sa verse number 7. Uh, and uh, Potiphar's wife wanted to sin with Joseph. What was their sin? She said, come sin with me. Come and sin with me, Joseph. She tempted Joseph. She wanted to commit adultery against her husband. She wanted Joseph to become her new husband. And Joseph was faithful. Look at verse number 8. But he refused and said to, unto his master's wife, Behold, My master wateth not. Yung wateth, King James na King James yan. Ang ibig sabihin ng wateth, knoweth. Knoweth. Knoweth not what is with me in the house and hath committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in his house than I, verse 9, neither he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So napakaganda ng um, theology ni Joseph. Did you notice Joseph's theology? He recognized the sanctity of marriage. He, he understands that a husband and a wife is to be faithful to each other till death. And uh, Joseph said, I cannot sin against you and against God. So he knows that sin is sin against God. It's great wickedness. And then he considered how blessed he is uh, uh, in the position of a steward. And he remains faithful to Potiphar. <clears throat> and so every day, tingnan mo ang verse number 10. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. Day by day, every day, uh, Mrs. Potiphar, she's not given a name, hindi natin alam ang pangalan niya. Pero araw-araw tinutukso niya si Joseph, come sin with me, sin with me. And Joseph is different. He's different from Judah. He's different from Jacob. He's different from Abraham. Joseph is the one patriarch that did not fall into uh, immoral sin. Uh, so <clears throat> look at verse number uh, 12. Verse number 12. And she caught him by his garment. Yung coat niya na naman. <laughs> Naalala niyo yung colorful coat niya noon? Yung colorful coat ang naging dahilan kung bakit nagselos yung mga kapatid niya. Ngayon, yung coat na naman niya bilang pati first assistant, yun na rin ang naging dahilan kung bakit tila nagmukha na siya ang nag sa asawa ni Potiphar. And so his coat becomes the point there. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, 
verse number 12. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Now he ran outside the, the, the streets. Siya lumabas siya sa bahay, pero huli na ang lahat at mukhang siya ang gumawa ng mali. Okay, so be careful Christians na tayo ang nasa tama palagi kapag mayroong pangyayari at gumamit tayo ng isip natin. Men should never be alone with a woman in a room, in a house. A man, lalo pag hindi ikaw ang asawa and you are a man, never enter a room with a woman alone. <clears throat> uh, balang araw, magkaroon tayo ng nursery para sa mga baby, sa mga bata. Yung men dapat hindi pumapasok sa nursery ng church. That's for women only. Huh? Uh, and men, uh, pag hindi open air, ano yung open air sa labas? Pag hindi open air, never be alone in a room with a woman. Never. Ah, Paano siyang standard lang? Not, hindi naman natin sinasabi pag yung men at saka woman nasa kwarto, so alone, may nangyayari or whatever. No. Pero bilang protection and standard, sasabihin natin, wag na lang. Alright? Wisdom yon, Wisdom. Kasi nga si Joseph naman, wala naman siyang ginawang mali, pero napagkamalan siya na gumawa ng mali. Now, and so he was accused and he had no recourse because it appeared as though he really was in sin uh, or did wrong. And of course, uh, verse number 14, and she called unto the men of her house, sinumbong niya sa mga tauhan muna, spake unto them, saying, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us and he came unto me to lie with me and I cried with a loud voice and it came to pass When he heard and I lifted up my voice that he cried, he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Ngayon naman, yung may amo ang bumalik si Potiphar. So sinumbong niya. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, verse number 18, Genesis 39, verse 18, And it came to pass as I lift up my voice and I cried, he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass that when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, his wrath was kindled. Eh, Siyempre, nagalit naman si Mr. Potiphar dahil pinagkakatiwala naman niya yung kanyang wife. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. So, ayan, nakulong si Joseph. Now, ano ang pag-asa ni Joseph? Ngayon na siya nasa kulungan, nawala na siya ng trabaho, nawala na siya ng kitaan, nawala siya ng pwesto, nawala ang lahat sa kanya. Na down na down siya talaga, nasa presinto na siya, wala pang damit. <laughs> I'm sure there are times dito sa prison na ito na inisip ni Joseph yung word ng Panginoon na binigay sa kanya ng Diyos. Sabi mo, Lord, sa panaginip, ako ang magiging hari at yuyo ko ang aking mga kapatid. Yung, yung tauhan ko, yuyo ko sila sa akin. Pero napakahirap makita yung pangako mo sa situation ko ngayon. Kasi nga, nasa prison to ako. But isn't that exactly how we are as Christians? God gave us His promises. God gave us His word. And yet when you look at your circumstance, where is the promise of God? Where is the promise of God? And I do believe that in the prison, Joseph learned to believe in the Lord against his situation. And this is the testing of the Christian. Did God give you a word? Oh, He didn't just give us a word. He gave us the word. <laughs> and uh, you look at your present situation, and it doesn't line up with the word of God? Well, keep on trusting the Lord. Keep on believing His word. Because if God gave you a promise, it doesn't matter what the present situation is. God will bless.
God will encourage you. If you have a word from the Lord, you can trust in the Lord. And I know Joseph went through that. Uh, so verse number 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. Again, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the keeper of the prison. Ito naman, keeper of the prison. Yung salitang keeper dito sa Hebrew, Zar. Zar. No? So, di ba, pag may Pangulo, nag-a-appoint siya ng Zar, <laughs> doon nang galing yung word na yung Zar. Sa Hebrew pala, Zar. The Zar of the prison, the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in prison. And whatsoever they did there, uh, they did there he was the doer of it. No, naging activity coordinator si Joseph sa mga presinto, <laughs> sa prisoners. Uh, he became uh, a prominent leader in the prison system. <laughs> and the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord, again, was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And so you can put him in Potiphar's house, he'll prosper. You can put him in the prison, he'll prosper. You can put him in the pit, he'll prosper because the Lord is with him. And this is us as a Christian. No matter what happens to you, as long as you're faithful to the Lord, you can guarantee God's going to be faithful to you. And He will bless you. So, uh, sa katapusan, uh, sasarado na natin itong uh, chapter na ito. Uh, tingnan natin kung paano si Jesus Christ or paano si Joseph ay katulad ni Jesus Christ. Where do we see that? Well, We see Jesus here. Uh, again, Joseph is a good picture of Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 32. John chapter, I'm sorry. John chapter 16, verse 32. Katulad ng ang Panginoon ay, suma, ay na kay Joseph, ganun din ang Diyos Ama kay Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 16, Verse 32, John chapter 16, verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come. And th- then ye shall be scattered to every man his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, sabi ni Jesus, because the Father is with me. And so Joseph is just, just like the Lord Jesus. The Lord was with Joseph. And the Father is with the Son always. And so, uh, where else do we see Joseph being like Jesus Christ? Well, um, everything that Joseph did prosper. And everything that Jesus will do will prosper. Look at Isaiah 53. Tingnan mo yung Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And verse number 10. Isaiah 53, verse number 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So yes, mamamatay si Jesus Christ, pero babangon siya maguli. At lahat ng pinaghirapan ni Jesus Christ, makikita niya, babawiin niya sa kanyang mga anak. Oh my, Jesus is very much, uh, uh, Joseph is very much a picture. Joseph was a steward in Potiphar's house. Faithful. Jesus is faithful. Uh, pinagkatiwala sa, pinagkatiwala ng Diyos Ama tayo kay Heso Kristo. Who is our shepherd? Who is our great faithful high priest? It's Jesus Christ. Does he take care of us? He takes very good care of us. Uh, so, Joseph was like Christ in that he was falsely accused. Si Jesus Christ din, no? Falsely accused. Wala namang kasalanan si Jesus Christ, pero siya ang, um, ano yun? Siya ang, ano yung accused? Siya ang si, ano yun? Oh, inakusahan. Yes. Inakusahan. May Tagalog talaga doon. Hindi sinumbong, sinumbong, 
sinumpong. <laughs> Ewan ko. Yun, yun. Pinagbintangan. Layo naman ng sinumpong. Pinagbintangan. Ganon din si Joseph. Pinagbintangan siya. All right. Jesus was tempted. Joseph was tempted. Jesus was tempted. Naalala ninyo yung temptation of Jesus Christ? Tatlong beses siya tinempt ni Satan. Pabaptize pa lang ni Jesus Christ. Nagumpisa na yung warfare. <laughs> And so Jesus was tempted just like Joseph. Joseph speak no words of defense. Walang self-defense si Joseph. Hindi siya nagbukas ng bibig niya at nag- nagsabi ng katotohanan. Pinabayaan na lang niya ang nangyari. And so jo- Jesus did the same thing. When Jesus was accused, he opened not his mouth. He spake no words. That's Joseph too, same thing. And uh, Joseph, like Jesus, was respected by the jailer. Yung kumulong kay Joseph, narespeto niya si Joseph, ganun din yung kumulong kay Jesus Christ, narespect niya si Jesus Christ. Look at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, and then we're done. Luke chapter 23. Verse number 47, Luke 23, verse 47. Now when the centurion, yan yung uh, captain ng 100 Roman soldiers, siya yung, kumbaga, siya yung keeper of the jail, siya yun. The, the centurion <clears throat> saw what was done. He glorified God saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Nung nakita niya si Jesus Christ uh, sa Calvary, doon niya nasabi, tatalagang si Jesus Christ ay napakabuting tao. And so, <clears throat> ganun din ang respeto ng, ng keeper of the jail, ng prison ni Joseph. All right? And so, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you for the many, many blessings and lessons that we can learn in Joseph's life. And we're so thankful you're not just interested in Joseph. You take great interest in each and every one of us. Thank you for your indwelling presence. Thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you that you can be with us. Thank you that you can prosper us, Lord, no matter what we accomplish. We recognize that behind all of us, really, we are just instruments in your hand. And we give you honor, praise, and glory for your kindness and love towards us. And we ask that you bless now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.